The one thing that keeps I, interesting to me, John, that you could probably give some share some insight into is, um, you know, everybody in Toronto obviously knows how it ended for Kyle Dubas, and I was a big Kyle Dubas supporter. Like I, I think he's a really bright guy and 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 a and a smart GM. But um, what makes how, you think he's a smart GM? I just I you know I'm not I don't want a Monday morning quarterback. I I he was able to keep guys around who I thought they should have signed long term. He went in to try to win a cup in certain years, and I'm not going to kill him in hindsight. Like I would have made the Ryan O'Reilly deal, and I understand the deals he made at the deadline. But and here's my but, John it seems very he clear. Didn't make, he didn't make the Ryan O'Reilly deal. Oh, he sorry, did. I was yeah. thinking Ryan Reeves. I was thinking Ryan Reeves. Yeah, Ryan O'Reilly. Yeah. So oh, um, you got me on the Ryan Reeves. Yeah, yeah, there. yeah. My apologies. So, but the real interesting thing to me now is that, like, you know, he's only been in Pittsburgh for a short time, and and yeah. is the, you think the fan base has already turned yes. on him? Yes, yes, I think so. Well, wow. I, the, the fan like, base turned on him. I think the fan base has soured on the direction, um, and and for one simple reason, um, you know, they were they can live with the the downs now of Chris Letang, who has been absolutely brutal, was brutal again yesterday. They can understand Evgeny Malkin um, because both of those guys helped deliver Stanley Cups here. Yep. But they brought in Eric Carlson from San Jose for $11 million, uh, thinking that that would be the thing that gets this team over the top. And it hasn't. And now he's done it at the expense of losing one of the most popular players in Pittsburgh and Jake Gensel because he doesn't have any money to re-sign him because Eric Carlson has all the money in the contract that Carlson brought with him from San Jose. Oh, those are, so those that's are, the down those are, that's a downside here. This Pittsburgh is very similar to Buffalo, Richard, in its loyalty to its athletes. Yeah. And you know. You know, like the, like the guys of the Steel Curtain are always going to be legends here, even you know with four four Super Bowls. Mario Lemieux is a legend here. Um, Sidney Crosby. Heck, you walk around the arena. I walked around the arena last night. There had to be a hundred pictures of Sidney Crosby. If they ever get rid of Sidney Crosby, it's it's going to be a a great day for the photographer and the and the uh, the framing company. They put new pictures up. Well, listen, I don't want to, I don't want to, I'm not, I'm not going to come off here as like a Kyle Dubas apologist. The only thing I would say is, and again, he's got to own it because he took the job, but like, it wasn't an, it's not, there may not be a fix, John. Like, you know, the problem is if you have, oh, no, no, that's right. You know what I mean? If like, if, if the core of your team are these two guys who are on the wrong side of 30, like, what can you do? Unless, unless you just, you know, unless you trade everybody, but like, if you trade it, like, I think we've talked about this in the past. If you trade Sidney Crosby, you're, you're done. You can't. You're not going to keep that job. You can't trade an icon like that. I I, I think they're done already, Richard. I, I agree. That that's I, that's the obvious part. And and the the other mitigating thing to this is, um, you know, th this this team is now not owned by Mario Lemieux and Ron Burkle. This team is owned by a conglomerate. This is this team is owned by Fenway Sports Group, that own the Red Sox, have investment in the PGA Tour, own Liverpool. Yep. Uh, yep. They're all over the map when it comes to sports investments. They understand. They understand that if they're better to keep, and this, their philosophy was to keep the veteran players, the veteran superstars that have delivered the legacy to the city, because that might sell more tickets. Because that's really that's. I'm not as I don't think they're as concerned about winning as they are selling tickets. And and in the short term, that's what that's what they've done. And so Fenway, like. Brian Burke and Ron Hextel can't talk about it because they're still getting paid, but we all know that Fenway Sports Group forced Hextel to sign Latang and Malkin to new contracts. They they wanted to trade them. I mean, it makes you wonder now well, why Jim Rutherford. Well, but but Fenway didn't allow them to, Bob. And then you make well, it makes you now it makes you also wonder now, and we'll never know the truth because he'll never tell us why Jim Rutherford really left here three or four years ago, did he see the writing on the wall and said, I've got to change. I've got to, I'm, I'm not trading Sid, but I've got to trade some other bodies. I'm and sure. I do think that there Maybe. might've been something, but something Maybe. to that. So uh, it's a slippery slope and talking to people around here, they all know that the end is near. They're, they're now talking about how great it's been. It's great. It's been, it's been, they've been in the playoffs 16 of the last 18 years. They're starting to put the malaise in and try to put the excuses up. That's the reality. What's going on in Pittsburgh hockey, right? I mean, now. you if you're these guys, you know, you take these jobs because there's only whatever thirty or thirty-two of them. But uh, you know, 
I think a lot of the people who take the general manager president jobs, they know walking in that they got no chance. Like if you're, if you, if you take the job, if you take the San Jose Sharks job today, you, you, you're, you, you have no chance to win. You're not going to win. You're going to be done in three to five years. I'm not saying don't take it, but like, you know, in some ways you're just taking it because it's a very it's high, a yeah, high, high profile, high paying job. Mm-hmm. 